Marcus Cassianius Latinus Postumus was a Roman commander of provincial origin who ruled as emperor in the West. The Roman army in Gaul threw off its allegiance to Gallienus around the year 260, and Postumus assumed the title and powers of emperor in the provinces of Gaul, Germania, Britannia and Hispania, thereby founding what scholars have dubbed the Gallic Empire. He ruled for the better part of ten years before he was murdered by his own troops. Life. Rise to power Little is known about the early life of Posthumus. He has been claimed as a Batavian, certainly his coinage honors deities, Hercules Magusinus and Hercules Deus Aniensis, who would have been popular among the Batavians. Hercules Magusinus was probably an interpretation Romana translation of the Germanic deity Donar. Deus Aniensis may refer to the town of Doisa, located in or near Batavian territory and likely to be identified with Deisen. It has been hypothesized that Posthumus himself was born in Doisa. From these relatively obscure provincial origins, Posthumus would have risen through the ranks of the army until he held command of the Roman forces among the Celts. What his precise title was is not definitely known, though he may plausibly have been promoted by the Emperor Valerian to the position of Imperial Legate of Lower Germany. Posthumus was evidently in favor at court, and, according to Koenig, was granted an honorary consulship. By 259, Valerian was campaigning in the east against the Persians, while his son and co-emperor Gallienus was preoccupied with the situation on the Danubian frontier. Consequently Gallienus left his son, Saloninus, and military commanders, including Posthumus, to protect the Rhine, amid the chaos of an invasion by the Alemanni and Franks, and spurred on by news of the defeat and capture of Valerian. The army in Gaul revolted and proclaimed Posthumus Emperor. The trigger was their defeat in 260 of a Juthungian army which was returning from Italy laden with prisoners. Even though they had been repulsed by Gallienus at Mediolanum, under the command of Posthumus and Marcus Simplicinius Genialis, the Roman army crushed the Juthungi and Posthumus proceeded to distribute the captured spoils to the legions he commanded. Saloninus, on the advice of his Praetorian prefect Silvanus, demanded the transfer of the recovered booty to his residence at Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensium. Posthumus assembled his army and made a show of reluctantly enforcing this command, thus inviting his troops to instead throw off their allegiance to Gallienus. The troops accordingly proclaimed Posthumus Emperor and proceeded to besiege and attack Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensium, trapping Saloninus and Silvanus. After breaching the walls of the city, Posthumus had Silvanus and Saloninus killed, although his supporters later claimed that it was the native Gauls who were responsible for the murders. Later he erected a triumphal arch to celebrate his victory. Establishment of a Gallic Empire Posthumus was immediately recognized as emperor in Gaul, the two Germanias, and Rhaetia. By 261 Britannia, Gallia Narbonensis and Hispania had also acknowledged him as emperor, possibly after an expedition to Britain in the winter of 260-261. He established his capital in northern Gaul, probably at Colonia Claudia Ara Agrippinensium or Augusta Treverorum, and then proceeded to set up many of the traditional Roman legislative and executive structures. Apart from the position of emperor, he immediately assumed the office of consul alongside a colleague, Honorationus. Like his imperial predecessors, he became the Pontifex Maximus of the state and assumed tribunician power each year. He is thought to have established a senate, perhaps on the basis of the Council of the Three Gauls or Provincial Councils, and a Praetorian Guard, one of whose offices was to become the future Gallic Emperor Victorinus. Reflecting his power base, the chief members of Posthumus administration appeared to have been of northern Gallic origin, and indeed, the entire administration soon became rapidly Gallicized. 
Both Victor and Asymptetricus, important members of the government, hailed from this region. Posthumus represented himself as the restorer of Gaul and the bringer of security to the provinces on some of his coins, prior to 10 December 261. He also took the title of Germanicus Maximus, a title he earned after successfully defending Gaul against the Germans. His principal objective in assuming the purple appeared to be the restoration and defense of the Rhine frontier in the surrounding area, a task that he approached with vigor, earning the admiration of the ancient authors, who declared that he restored the security that the provinces had enjoyed in the past. So successful was he in the task of restoring peace and security to the provinces under his direct control that the coins issued by Posthumus were of better workmanship and higher precious metal content than coins issued by Gallienus. His control of the Spanish and British mining regions was presumably crucial in this regard, as was his employment of master minters who would have come into Gaul with Gallienus. Posthumus fought successful campaigns against the Franks and Alemanni in 262 and 263, following his victory over them in 263. He assumed the title Germanicus Maximus, after which his coin types celebrated peaceful themes such as Felicitas Augusta for some time. After having spent much of the last four years pushing the Franks out of Gaul, Posthumus then recruited Frankish troops to fight against other Franks, probably dispersed within existing Roman army units. Scholars continue to debate whether Posthumus originally intended to dislodge Gallienus from Rome or was content to rule only the western provinces. From the beginning of his usurpation, Posthumus had made it clear that he had no immediate intentions to make a bid for Rome, that his priority was for Gaul. Posthumus' uh, power base was Gaul and his main responsibility was the defense of the Rhine provinces. If he marched against Gallienus, then he would be exposing his heartland not only to the Germanic tribes but also potentially to any number of usurpers. Perhaps he hoped to achieve some official recognition from Gallienus. What is clear, however, is that Posthumus was not overtly separatist and did not revive the first century dream of an independent Galliarum Imperium. The forms, titles, and administrative structures of Posthumus a Principate remained conventionally Roman. Confrontation with Gallienus for four years Gallienus had been too distracted by Germanic invasions and other usurpers in the east to turn his attention to the situation to his north and west. This change in 265 when Gallienus launched a campaign to defeat Posthumus. After some initial success against Posthumus, his first attempt failed when Posthumus managed to escape from a precarious situation due to the carelessness of Gallienus, a cavalry commander, Oriolis, leading to Oriolis' a demotion and eventual abandonment of Gallienus in 267. A second campaign, led by Gallienus himself, also seemed to have the advantage over Posthumus, but while Gallienus was besieging a city in Gaul, he was wounded and forced to withdraw. After his failed attempt at defeating Posthumus, Gallienus was occupied with crises in the rest of his empire and did not confront Posthumus again. Gallienus nevertheless did manage to wrest control of Rhaetia from Posthumus during these years. Final years by the end of 265, Posthumus' coin issues were triumphantly commemorating the victory over Gallienus, and the festivities celebrating his quinquennalia continued into the following year. In 266, Posthumus became consul for the fourth time, taking as his colleague Marcus Piavonius Victorinus a Gallic noble who was also a senior military officer. His selection to such a high-profile position may be seen as an attempt to broaden Posthumus' a base of support. The year 268 saw the issuing of the Labors of Hercules series of gold coins in honor of Posthumus' a favorite god. A sudden debasement of the coinage later that year shows that Posthumus was facing increasing financial difficulties. 
due perhaps to a disruption of silver production in the Spanish mines or the need to buy off an increasingly discontented army. Such discontent must probably have been due to the army's frustration with posthumous a failure to take advantage of a golden opportunity to move against Gallienus in 268. Oriolus, the general who was in command of Mediolanum in Gallienus' interest, rebelled and ultimately declared for Posthumus. The city of Mediolanum and its north Italian and Rhetian hinterland would have been critical to Posthumus if he planned to march on Rome. For whatever reason, Posthumus failed to support Oriolus, who was besieged by Gallienus. Before the end of the northern summer in 268, the events at Mediolanum were to see the assassination of Gallienus, the defeat of Oriolus, and the accession of Claudius II. It also triggered a sequence of events that would see the end of Posthumus a rule in Gaul. Fall Posthumus assumed his fifth consulship on 1 January 269, but the army in Germania Superior raised a usurper in early 269. Lelanus, one of Posthumus' a top military leaders and the governor of Germania Superior, was declared emperor in Mogentiacum by the local garrison and surrounding troops. Although Posthumus was able to capture Mogentiacum and kill Lelanus within a few months, he was unable to control his own troops, who wished to put Mogentiacum to the sack. When Posthumus tried to restrain him, his men turned on him and killed him. The mutineers set up Marius, a common soldier, as emperor. Marius held sway for a short while before being overthrown by Victorinus. Posthumus arrest while colleague in the consulship and tribune of the Praetorian Guard. In the meantime, the Gallic Empire lost Spain. Coinage. Posthumus has been of particular interest to numismatists, in light of the high quality and relative abundance of his coin issues. His Labours of Hercules series is particularly renowned.